Okay, so uh, yesterday uh, we discussed the detailed balance condition in physics. In physics is this one, and we derived it by imposing the detailed balance condition on, on a Markov chain plus the Boltzmann state or the thermal state or Gibbs state, whatever you like, or canonical ensemble uh, for a steady state. But if there was a discussion that we can now use the condition and apply, even though we have uh, proved this condition for our thermal equilibrium, we can now use the condition to go beyond uh, thermal equilibrium. Uh, how? Well, first, uh, for instance, uh, we can have driving, and driving means uh, that the energies depend on some parameter that I change or depend on time. So it's like a, a spin, for instance, you know that the, the, the energy levels in a spin one half in the presence of a, of a magnetic field are given by um, the magnetic field. So if I increase the magnetic field, I increase the, le I, the, the gap between the levels, or I increase, let's say, yeah, in, in, in principle, I increase this energy and I decrease this energy, you know, when I uh, increase the field. So this is what an external agent can do. Uh, you can have also, um, these are non-equilibrium uh, let's say non-equilibrium uh, constraints or non-equilibrium situations. One is driving, the other one could be that the temperature depends on the state, so you, I have some states, and I will, I will show you one example of this. Uh, I can have a system with four states, and, and, and the transitions between one and two uh, can be induced by a thermal bath at temperature T1, and also from four to three, but the vertical transitions, sorry, T1, uh, and this can be induced by another bath. And this can happen even in, in experiments. Great, thank you. Uh, so you can have different temperatures And uh, we can have also um, some of the transitions can be mediated by, by a fuel, by some chemical. And this is what we will discuss in a moment today as well. So you can have the equivalent, you know that a thermal bath is called a thermostat, no? Uh, when you have the, the equivalent to a thermal bath for particles, you know that in a thermal bath exchange energy with the system and the, the, the flow of energy is given by the temperature. No? So the bath is characterized by a temperature. You can have also a reservoir of particles. When you have a reservoir of particles, uh, you exchange particles. Of course, when you exchange particles, you also exchange energies. Um, you exchange energy, and the, what characterizes the transport between the, of particles between the reservoir and the system is the chemical potential. So you have a chemical potential. This is usually called a thermostat, because you keep, the bath is such that it doesn't matter how much energy the bath absorbs or so, the temperature is always the same. Let's say it's, the bath has an infinite heat capacity, and, um, and uh, uh, when you have a reservoir of particles with a mu, this is usually called a chemostat. So, uh, and this chemostat can be out of equilibrium. Like, for instance, everything in, in biology, all the motors that you have in biology, they, they, have, they uh, use ATP as a fuel. And uh, so there is a chemostat, a non-equilibrium chemostat of ATP and ADP, which is out of equilibrium, and this is what allows all the molecular motors to work. So another way is uh, 
in these non-equilibrium situations is, um, is non-equilibrium chemostats. This could be said, different temperatures could be also said non-equilibrium thermostats. And, uh, and, and you can have, um, of course, both. You can have the three things, no? In some nano machines, you can have a fuel, which is a non-equilibrium chemostat. Sometimes, for instance, in, in artificial motors, the Nobel Prize of Chemistry of uh, four years ago and so, it was for uh, three people uh, doing uh, artificial motors chemi chemi in chemistry. And usually they use light as a fuel, but light is also a kind of, light is characterized by some mu, and so you can have, um, uh, well, light is not, uh, because in all these cases, the bats are in equilibrium. So when you have light from a laser, this is not an equilibrium. But anyway, this is another way of, uh, of driving a system out of equilibrium. But the, the thing is that in all these situations, even though they are out of equilibrium, you can use the detail balance condition. Huh? This is an example. For instance, if, if I have, yesterday I, I, I cooked this example. If you have, um, let's say, uh, you have an energy epsilon, this is the energy, epsilon here, epsilon here, zero here and zero here, okay? And now suppose that, um, that uh, I have different temperatures. If you want to do make models, simple models of, uh, of uh, motors or things like that or, or Markov chains, the best thing is to, to consider the extreme uh, cases. And for instance, what is the extreme case in the case, I want two different temperatures. The extreme case is that one is zero and the other is infinity. So this is a, uh, and, and we are do, going to do that, yeah. So my question is, uh, in these uh, non-equilibrium situations, the fact that uh, the, the uh, detailed balance condition uh, holds uh, comes from the fact that, that we can still describe the system with the Boltzmann distribution, even if uh, the system... No, 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 no. Ah, okay. No, no, this is the thing. Uh, remember, this condition, we derive this condition, uh, Assuming uh, detail balance, global, detail, I mean, zero currents, and Boltzmann distribution for the steady state. The point is that if you now take different temperatures, things like that, then the system is not going to be Boltzmann. Yeah? It's not going to be Boltzmann. But this equation is true. Ah, okay. So, Yeah, 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 yeah. But if you have this type of things, oh, okay. for instance, uh, the detail balance condition between one and two, so between one and two, is going to be the exponential of minus T1, beta 1. Yeah? So KT1, and now the energy this minus this, which is epsilon and so on and so on. And between three and two, between two and three, is, uh, in this case, this is minus epsilon, so it's plus epsilon, kt2. So you see that there is no, um, there is a local, this is called local detail balance, because, but, but this is, a, this is, this is a problem with the names, no? Uh, in mathematics, local, in mathematics, detail balance means zero current locally. Actually, local detail balance is a bad expression because detail is, when you say detail balance is local, that locally every current is zero. But, but in physics, we call, lock, we call detail balance this one. And when this, this, this equation, and when this equation is, is fulfilled locally, because maybe beta is, uh, depends on i and j, is, you have different bars and so on, 
then we, we call it local detail balance. But I, I think it's not a very good expression, I would say. So basically, to, under sorry, to understand the, um, better, like that one would hold uh, in equilibrium systems for every IJ, and in non-equilibrium system only on specific, uh, only locally. Like what's the difference? I don't no, understand. the only difference is that this beta is the same for the whole thing. For the whole network. And here, the beta changes. But uh, we derive that assuming, as you said, the, the equilibrium and the Boltzmann distribution. How can we prove that the whole, that also holds? Uh, OK, this is the uh, gap. Yeah, yeah, you are right. This is the, the, let's say, the argument is that the gammas depend on the dynamics. Okay. And actually, on the local dynamics, if you, if you, if you can derive the gammas from a theory, for instance, using Kramer's. Kramer's problem is that you have a Brownian particle or a Brownian degree of freedom between two wells, and you calculate the rate at which there are jumps. And this depends only on these two guys. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's reasonable to assume that if, if, if this condition is valid when T1 is equal to T2, is it still valid when T1 is different from T2? Because it's a dynamical, con is it, because the gammas depend on the dynamics of the system and not on the rest of the, of the well, in theory, lattice. The comes from the ratio between the probabilities of being in state J and state J. No, no, no. OK. I've derived this. Let's say the argument is the following. No? I have a dynamics given by my gammas. And I, I, I know that when all the temperatures are equal, the system must relax. So I derived this equation for the gammas. Now I said, ah, I have different temperatures. And then I claim, using this argument that the gammas are not affected, are, are, are local properties, I say, this condition is still fulfilled by the, by the gammas, even out of equilibrium, OK? Yeah, but I, I admit. We don't have, this is a kind of phenomenological approach, although it's very fundamental because it's a statistical mechanics. But I agree that for a good theory, you need a theory that derives the gammas from Hamiltonian dynamics or from quantum mechanics and so on. And we have these theories. We have the gammas, uh, as I said yesterday, you can use Bohr approximation to get the gammas, and, uh, and you can use in classical mechanics, you can use the Kramer's approach to get the gammas. So when we're considering about the monocovariant phenomena, are we assuming the local equilibrium? Uh, mm, no, what you are assuming is that the bath is in equilibrium. The, here we have two baths, uh, but the system cannot, not necessarily is in equilibrium. OK. Uh, yeah. OK, so just as an example of this, what do you think is going to happen? For instance, if T goes to, if T is, if T1 is, um, so T1 is 0, no, let's say T1 infinity and T2 0, what do you think is going to happen? Eh? For these guys, ratio will be one, yeah. and for these guys, this was it will be one. So the temperature is so high that they don't care what is the energy. And here, uh, there will be is only one direction of motion. This is completely irreversible. So you can go jump. For instance, you can jump from here to here, but never back, and from here to here and never back. So uh, do you think there will be a, a current here or something? No? If the particle is here, what happens? It goes down. It never goes up. Now it starts to move like that because it is infinite temperature. And from time, from, and, uh, uh, but suddenly, I mean, there is a chance that moves here. And now it cannot go back. So there will be a, a current like that. Uh, 
and you can actually the, the car, this current this current is easy to is easy to to write the current. For instance, in this in this uh, see what is it? In this in this one, what is the current? The current is the stationary probability in one. Let's let's call. Well, uh, one one important thing: detail balance does not tell you what is the value of the gammas. It's just a condition. So to complete the model, we have to we have a choice. For instance, we could say that uh, in this case, eh, we could say that uh, uh, gamma one to two. This is the, the this is the detail balance condition, no? Because T1 is infinity. So if it is infinity, this is one. No, this the, this is zero, this is one, and then you have the two. Let's call these gammas. And, and here, if T2 is zero, this means that it is plus infinity, so this is zero. So gamma 3, 2. So uh, T2 is zero, so the system can never go up or go down here. This is zero. And we have to fix the other ones, gamma 2 to 3 and gamma 4 to 1, let's, 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 to make things simple, we can make it like that, and, and we still have uh, this horizontal one, 4 to 3, 3 to 4, and let's call gamma, so everything depends on gamma. So uh, um, this is a, a choice that obeys detailed balance, and, um, but we can have other choices. We, can, we could call this gamma one, gamma two, gamma three, etc. With this choice, you see that uh, the current between one and two, all these currents are equal. This is because we are in the stationary regime. So the current here must be equal to the current here, the current here, the current here. Otherwise, there will be uh, an imbalance and we, 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 the, the probabilities are not stationary. So this will be a gamma minus P S2 gamma, and this must be equal to J2 to 3, and J2 to 3 is just, uh, is just P2, uh, and the rate from, from, FC, from 2 to 3, which is gamma, and you can have, um, and this is also equal to J3 to 4 and J3, 4 to 1. And we call this J. So, uh, and now you have, uh, you have a bunch of, you have many equations, no? This equation, this equation, you can solve it. It's, I mean, it's just one line. And you will find that the probability of, uh, uh, you can do it as a very simple exercise. The probability of two and uh, I think it's probability of two and four are equal, and it's one over six, and the probability of one and three is. Um, one over three. So particles uh, are more populated in the in these states where the energy is, of course, this is bigger than zero. So in the let's say ground states or in the states of minimal energy are more populated. And the current, which has units of uh, time minus one, is gamma divided by six. So you have a um, Non-equilibrium situation. This is a this is a thermal motor. This is the nice thing of this uh, discrete of these master equations. You can cook models that I mean, you can cook models that uh, using two temperatures you have a motion, or you have a f if you if you exert some force you can have work. You can not here calculate efficiency, and efficiency should be smaller than Carnot efficiency. Uh, something that people in thermodynamics like a lot is to calculate the power. The power is, well, in this case, 
uh, we don't have an, a force, so uh, uh, you cannot calculate the, car the power, but uh, um, you can calculate the power and the, the efficiency at maximum power and a lot of, of funny things. Yes? Why is? Why uh, does it occur with a radio gamma and not instantaneously? Because, so I see that 1, 2, and 2, 1 has an infinite temperature. So, okay, the rate between the. Yeah. Should be yeah. Yeah, this is a good. Well, uh, it depends on the nature. This, the, the master equation, the nice thing is the formalism that can be applied to many systems. It can be even applied to population dynamics or. Uh, so, um, um, it, what you said, it depends on the, on the, on the uh, physical nature of the system. But uh, you can imagine this. Actually, we have a collaborator that is doing this in, in Loven with optical tweezers. So, uh, he has uh, uh, four wells. Well, it is... Uh, this is from top, so you have four wells, which are the four states, and then to jump from one to the other, you have some corridors here. So here the potential is a potential, no? which is very high in the middle. You have two wells, like an egg box, no? and, you have a, and you can go like that. To go from two to three, as you said, uh, in this experiment, you need to cross a barrier. So it's not instantaneous. Uh, of course, if you think of the of 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 um, these states like that, you tend to think that it goes uh, to zero instantaneously. But it is not true. Not even not even for for um, quantum systems. You need in quantum systems you have a probability per unit of time to jump, which is given by this. Uh, uh, or approximation, or also by the golden rule, by the golden Fermi rule, and in classical systems you need to cross a barrier. So you you can assume it depends on on the model that you have. So we have only the energies of these three four states, but in between we can have barriers. And and this is telling you that uh, you have this, for instance, from two to three. You will have something like that. Well, if the temperature is zero, so, no, you are right that you cannot have. Uh, yeah, you are right that you should have something like that. Yeah, maybe uh, the model is not. Uh, in, well, I, I should. Maybe you are right, but I, what, did, what it is important is that you can cook up these models with. Um, and they are consistent thermodynamically, in the sense that if T1 is equal to T2, you get equilibrium. So uh, if, if you had some, some efficiency, efficiency would be smaller than Carnot. So uh, they are, um, sometimes in these extreme cases, they are a little bit artificial. But the nice thing is that they are consistent. And this is also a message if you want to make models of uh, something that, of course, these are like toy models, eh? but uh, sometimes you want to really, they are the first step to, for a realistic model. And this is also a message that you can learn that sometimes it's better to go to the simplest case. In this case, this, well, I took this. This is the simplest case because the, all, the, all the transitions become either completely reversible or completely uh, reversible, I mean, completely uh, symmetric. So uh, it's a nice tool. Now, if we, now that we know that this creates a current, we can go to more realistic cases. We can go to T1 bigger than T2. And I'm pretty sure I've not done the calculations, but if you got T bigger than T2, you will, you will see a current. So this is the kind of artificial model, but I think it's a good lesson to learn that uh, sometimes you have to go to this extreme, but very easy. I mean, you can you solve the master equation just in, in five minutes. So I think it's a, it's a good idea to start.
Yeah. Where? Who? Right. In, in the meantime, I answer my question. And but also uh, uh, this example, this is a very simple example to show you that uh, the, you can use this equation. Remember, to derive this equation, we assume zero current everywhere. Detail balance in the mathematical sense of the word of the expression. But now, assuming that this only depends on the dynamics and that I can extend this condition to more uh, complicated situations, I've uh, obtained non-equilibrium models which have an interesting behavior. In this case, it's a, it's a thermal motor. It's using, like Carnot cycle, it's using uh, uh, baths in, at different temperatures to create motion. OK? So um, this was just a, a note for what we saw yesterday, uh, well, let me, at the end of the class today, we will see the non-equilibrium chemostats, and driving, driving is this one. So yesterday I started to look at the driving. The driving is, uh, By the way, this has nothing to do with the CLR engine, but, but it will be our tool for next week to, uh, to address the problem of when uh, molecular machines can be considered Maxwell demons or not. Yeah? So uh, this is why I'm, I'm doing this. So um, yesterday, what I considered was this case, the driving. And again, when we have a driving, we have a system. We have a thermal bath at a given temperature. And we have an external agent. And we have a heat and work. You can, of course, combine now external agent with two thermal baths and things. You can do all the combinations. These are the three main sources of non-equilibrium for this type of models and systems. Uh, I, I've discussed this one. Now I'm going to discuss this one and later on this one. OK, so uh, what about the driving? Well, the driving introduces something interesting, which is the first law of thermodynamics and the second law and so on. So um, yesterday, I think I, I introduced the, the, uh, the average energy, which goes a sum over all possible states of the probability. I'm using this notation times uh, the energy. And then uh, we calculate how this energy changes in time. And we saw that there are two terms. The first term is the evolution, is the, the change due to the external agent. And the second one is the change due to the evolution of the probability. Did I write this yesterday? No? I wrote, I wrote this yesterday, no? So, um, uh, and I, I wrote the same for general Hamiltonian systems. Remember when we also, so you can always uh, split the change in the energy of the system as a, a driven, driven system. Of course, if the system is not driven, this is zero. And this is due to the action of the agent. So this is the work. And this is due to the interaction of, between the system and the thermal bath. So this is heat. And actually, this time, we are going to, to check uh, precisely why this is heat. And we will see that this is heat. Using the detail balance condition, you can prove that this is heat. And this is what we are going to do uh, now. So this is work, and this is heat. And yeah, if we, uh, now we can use let me write the, uh, 
let me write here the condition. And I want to keep also this thing because it is a, we are going to, to check all these uh, points in the list. So let's, let's talk about the, the heat, the, the work, sorry. The work is uh, the sum over uh, I of EI, the energy of state I, and then the derivative. Remember the master equation? We wrote the master equation like that. is the sum of all the current coming from N elsewhere to I. Uh, and this is the sum over J. So I will have here a sum over J. I should put J different from I, but if we, if we agree that J, the current from I to I, or from J to J is zero, I can skip this. Ah, you can, because uh, in principle it's like that. But I hate this notation because sometimes this notation, here the sum is only over j. And sometimes we use this notation to sum over j and i when j and i are different. So it is a, so uh, let's assume that j, j, j too, too many j's. J, 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 i is zero for all i and that's it. So um, this is a, a j, a j i of t, uh, that's it, no? Now uh, we are going to do, so I, I can write this like a sum over all possible pairs. Remember that this is essentially j different from i, but I will not indicate this any, anymore. And this is a, there is a, a nice way of writing this, which is using the anti-symmetry of the, of, the, the, of the current. Remember the current is anti-symmetric. So the current from I to J is equal than the current from J to I. Remember, uh, uh, the, well, just keep this as the, as the outline of the lecture today, but uh, space is limited, so I have to remove it. Remember that G, remember what is G, the current uh, from I to J is PI, gamma i to j minus pj gamma j to i. Gammas now depend on time because of, co on, because, uh, of this condition. So uh, we have anti-symmetry here. So we can split this into, um, we, we can, um, uh, uh, if, if we change, Okay, let's, let's do it like that. We can uh, split this into one half uh, and, and sum here minus, uh, and I can change here the order. Okay, this is the same because I just changed and I divide by two. This sum is the same as this one. So it's a stupid step, it looks a stupid step. But the, because these, uh, these uh, indices are uh, dummy variables I'm, I'm summing, I can change here j, by, j and i. So I can put here j and here I can put j i. And now I have the same factor so I can write this as one half this sum. Let me skip I minus J, 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 I. No, let me, yeah. Okay. And this is the sum over I and J, but now this is symmetric. You see, this is anti-symmetric, this is anti-symmetric, so that everything is symmetric. So I can just, uh, each pair of ij contributes the same. So uh, I can, instead of divide by two, I can restrict my sum to i 
smaller than j. So I, I got this expression. And this exp we are going to do this trick many times. So uh, we, we have something times the current, and, and we can always split it like that. And why this is interesting? Because mathematically, it's not very interesting. But uh, uh, physically, it's very interesting, because uh, in here is uh, my transition. These are the energies. I usually like this type of diagram where the energy is in the vertical axis. And uh, what is this? Uh, actually, I, I prefer to call this. Let me uh, switch again the indexes. I should, because I'm more familiar. It's the same. Eh? I can. This, remember, this is anti-symmetric. This is anti-symmetric because it's just a, a, a difference. So the whole thing is symmetric. So oh, okay, uh, I have the the heat. Let's let's write this equation like that. Heat is this thing, and why? And and uh, this is actually this is the the number of transitions from I to J in a given time or per unit of time. Sorry. And this is the heat in a transition. Why? Why Ej minus Ei, which is this difference, why this is the heat? Anybody can tell me? When, when, I'm, when my system jumps from I to J, the energy increases. Where does this energy come from? It comes from the external agent, or it, it comes from the bath, because the external agent is moving the jump is due to the, the, the jump are not due to the external agent. The external agent only changes the, the energies of the states. So this is energy that comes from the path. So now we have a very nice expression, which is heat is in each transition, J from I to J. Uh, in, in each transition I to J, I multiply the heat involved in this transition or the heat um, in, which is the energy supplied by the bath in this transition, times the number of transitions per unit of time. And then I get a nice sum over all transitions, and then I get the heat per unit of time. Yeah, yeah. Here, G, I, J, is minus G, eh? G, I, J, J, I, J is minus J, J, I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, minus. This is. Remember the definition. I, I Remember the definition of J. Jij is pi. This is a, a gamma ij minus pj gamma ji, and it's symmetric okay? because it's the net flow of of probability from i to j. So this net flow is minus the probability from j to i. There were more questions, no? More questions with over there? There was a question, that, sorry. No? Yeah? Huh? Well, I introduced the factor one half. Here I introduce it because I just, I have this, no? And then I put it twice. This is the same as this because it's just to change the, this is equal to this. Right? Because of the asymmetry of the anti-symmetry of this, so I have to include the one half, and then I remove the one half by by here I am counting pairs twice, and I divide one half. So one way, well, I could I could keep this and put this, but it is better to uh, the one half is just to count every pair just once, not uh, not twice, not twice. No, no, uh, Q dot, okay, the goal of this expression, of this calculation, first is because we are going to repeat it many, many times, but it is to, to check that this, 
this comes from this, that this is, is, uh, is, the, is the heat. Well, the goal is to have two expressions for the heat, because we are going to use this to prove now the second law. So you, you proved in the end that this is Q dot. Eh? It's in the end that you proved that this is Q dot. OK, uh, without, we have not proved anything. I mean, we have, uh, we have from here you can more or less uh, guess or uh, conclude that this is the energy, that this is the heat, that this is the, because this is the energy provided by the agent, because it is, the agent is doing this, and this is the energy provided by the bath. So, I mean, to prove that this is the energy of, uh, this is not necessary. But this is an extra check, if you like, where we can have a, 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 an interpretation of this expression, which is equal to that one, in terms of transition. So it's a, it's a nice expression in the sense that it allows us to decompose the heat into contributions coming from each transition. This is a, it's not a proof, because we, we don't need a proof, actually. And something which is also very interesting is that now we can use the uh, now we can use the we can use this uh, this uh, detail balance condition, and you see here is in the exponent. So if I take logarithms and I multiply by kt, I get this nice expression. Or uh, I, I'm I'm following I, I'm having and uh, using the i's and j's different from the notes, but it's okay. You have to be careful with the with the indexes, but this is the so uh, we can also write this the heat as kt the sum over i is more than j of the current uh, times uh, the log of gamma j i and gamma i j. And we are going to use now, in a moment, uh, to derive a second law for, uh, for these systems. Yeah? So when we write this last passage, are we assuming like, uh, that it's a quasi-static uh, process? So that like, in, um, you mean in time, it manages to equilibrate to some? Um, this is a very good question. Not necessarily, because if it is a if it is a true quasi-static process, then the probabilities will be equal to the instant equilibrium. So uh, it's uh, but it's true that if the process is very fast, then the whole uh, formalism of the master equation fails, and all these gammas. When we assume that there is a detailed balance condition, we are assuming that the process is not super fast, but but the system can be out of equilibrium, this is for sure. Yeah. So uh, I'm talking about classical systems. In classical systems, when you have wells, when you discretize a classical system, is because you have a separation of time scales. 
and a, a time scale within the, the system and a time scale of jumps. So um, this means that the driving must be in between to keep the detail balance condition to be true. Yes. Okay, uh, this is, for instance, used many times in, 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 in biophysics in, in conform, conformations of proteins. In proteins, yeah, you don't have this problem. You, you have, well, you have this separation, huge separation of time scale. Uh, okay, so far so good. Now let's go to the second law, the second law of thermodynamics. We have a first law, no? We have this is the first law. This is the first law. Now let's try to, to, to uh, derive a second law for this type of systems. And for the second law, uh, what, we, what we are going to do, actually what we are going to do to prove is uh, that Shannon entropy is a good thermodynamic entropy. At the beginning of, of the course I said no, Shannon entropy is not always a good candidate for a thermodynamic proper uh, entropy. Here, it turns out that it is, but we are going to prove it. And uh, so we, we take the Shannon entropy as the, as the entropy of my system. We use the natural logarithm and we use uh, the Boltzmann constant in front. So this is a, 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 this is a number whose units are joules divided by Kelvin, which is the, the units of, of, uh, of entropy. And um, we are going to calculate first the derivative of this with respect to time. And this derivative, uh, I have to make the derivative of a product. So I first make the derivative of this which is, uh, I, I will use p dot. Plus pi, and then the derivative of this with respect to time. So I have to make the derivative of the logarithm, which is one, one minus pi. And then p, and then the derivative of this with respect to time. So this is the derivative of the entropy. Now this cancels with this. And then I have p dot, which is different from zero, but the sum of p dot, the sum of p dot is the derivative. This is a, a, a time derivative. I can take the derivative here. Is the derivative of the sum of pi, and the sum of pi because of normalization is one. So this is zero. this is the derivative with respect to time of sum of i. This is one all the time, so this is zero. So this is zero, this cancels. So now I have uh, that S, and I, I'm going to repeat almost equally this argument. Uh, so I have that S dot, this is S dot, is equal to uh, minus K, the sum of PI dot uh, log of PI. And now I use the equation of motion. The equation of motion is, uh, uh, this is a uh, sum over J of G i j as as I did before, so it is very similar to what I did before. Uh, I have minus k, k the sum of i j of G i j time log of pi. 
So now I have this current time, something that depends on the, on the state i. So I can use this statistic. It's very, it's, it's very common. So I, um, I use the anti-symmetry. to write the same thing, but with a minus, and I use the anti-symmetry. So I use that this is Ji. This is just the anti-symmetry of the, so this is the same as this. From J to I, sorry, yeah. I all, from J to I. And to keep IJ here, I'm going to, not, now I can uh, swap the indexes. And I can do it here or here. So I will do it here. So this is, a, this is the sum of over IJ. I swap the indexes. Uh, now this is, I can, here, if I swap the indexes, I have to change the sign. But if I have, if I change this, the, if I swap the indexes in the whole expression, I, it's just, they are dummy variables. So this is the trick. So this is ij log pj. Okay, and then uh, this is minus k divided by two. But I can, uh, Instead of divide by two, I can just uh, restrict the sum to pairs only. And then I have j i j log p i minus log p j. Okay? Uh, no, with plus. So it's log p i divide minus log p a j, which is log p j here in the denominator. Signs are correct because, <laughs> okay? It's the same, and, and it's, the idea is always the same, is to express the, the change of something, in this case is S, in the last case was heat, as a contribution. So this is, let's say, the, the change of entropy in my system when my system jumps from I to J. It's not so trivial as in the case of the energy. Before, this was the, the change of energy. This is the, the idea is to, to, to write these this derivatives as contributions from each transition. From each transition. So, um, that's it. But I want the second law. And this doesn't look like a second law. So the entropy of the system is not increasing, and it, 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 it must not increase. I mean, sometimes the entropy of the, of the system can decrease. What the second law tells us is that, what, what is the second law? The entropy of the? Of the universe, and what is the entropy of the universe? Or let's call it total entropy. What is the entropy of the universe? If, if we agree, if we assume that the, entropy, that the channel entropy is the entropy of the system, is the entropy of the system plus, let's put T, plus the entropy of the bath. And the entropy of the bath is, here we can use the Clausius equation, it's Q entropy delta of the entropy of the bath in any process is minus Q divided by T. So this is S dot minus Q divided by T. Okay? And now if I use this expression for Q 
And this expression for S what I get is the following. S total uh, I have the everything divided I have K here. And I have a sum ij, and I have j ij in both cases, so I can use this. And now I have q divided by t, so this t disappear. Uh, so I have the log of pi divided by pj minus. As I said, this t cancels with this t. This k is here, minus log of gamma j i gamma i j. And if I now group everything, I have gamma. This is minus, so this goes to the numerator. So I have pi t gamma ij pj gamma j i. This is the entropy production in my master equation due to driving or due to whatever. Of course, if uh, uh, yeah, due to driving, and this could depend on t as well. Huh? And what do you what do you think about this expression? Huh? There is a nice thing of this expression that uh, remember J J I J is P I P I gamma I J minus P J gamma J I. So look at the sign of this. When this is positive, look at the sign of the of the of the logarithm. The logarithm is, is positive is, is if its argument is bigger than one. When is this bigger than one? Then well, when this is bigger than this. But when this is bigger than this, this is positive. So the sign of the log is equal to the sign of the j. Yeah? It's one is just uh, so this is always positive. So the sum is always positive. So we have the sec we have a second law here. Uh, sorry, S total. In in thermodynamics, we call the change of entropy in the universe. We call it entropy production because it's an, it's an entropy that has been created. Uh, the entropy is not conserved. Is it? Oh, we have another question. Could you just repeat the interpretation of S dot in terms of transition? Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's more difficult because, well, you can write this as log of pi minus log of pj. And you can see this as a, as a change on, on the log. Uh, and the Shannon entropy is uh, minus k, uh, the, the the average of the log. So it's a bit like that. Okay? But, uh, yeah. Because each term in the sum, look at one term in the sum. Look at the sign of the current. The current is positive if this is bigger than this. But this is, in the, num this is the numerator, and this is the denominator. So whenever the current is positive, this is bigger than one, and the log is positive. Whenever the current is negative, this is smaller than one, and this is negative. And moreover, there is a nice interpretation of this, because what is this? This is the irreversibility that one can observe at the time t, because this is the number of jumps from i to j, divided by the number of jumps from j to i. 
So it's a kind of measure of the irreversibility of the two. Actually, it's related with the Kullback Leiber divergence that we dis discussed. And Edgar and, uh, has a lot of uh, results using that the entropy production is related quantitatively to the irreversibility of a process, or the irreversibility of a situation, because this is a, a given situation. So this is also a very nice interpretation. Yeah. I wouldn't say, well, we don't have, this is not a proof of the second law. I mean, the second law is, um, this is just a, a proof that the, that the second law, uh, or, uh, that you have a, let's say you have a second law for the Shannon entropy, if you consider that the, the, the entropy of the system is Shannon. So it's not a proof of the second law, let's say, in, a, in physical terms. I would say that it is a proof that in the, in the formalism of the master equation, you can uh, use the entropy of the, the Shannon entropy of the system as a thermodynamic entropy. But it's not fundamental because, in, in particular, because whenever you have a master equation, the master equation already contains the second law inside the equation. Because in, in, when you use master equation, it's because you coarse grain, let's say you forget about the details of the bath. And this induces already irreversibility. So from the point of view of fundamental statistical mechanics, this is not a really proof of the second law. It's a proof that, the, that you can have a second law in the context of a master equation. And you can talk about, um, and this is at the end of the day, this is, um, at the end, I mean, in, in, in thermodynamics, there is a lot of discussion with this, but my, my point of view is that, um, you can only define entropy for equilibrium system. So at the, at the end of the day, you have your system, and you have your baths or, or, res, or reservoirs. And what you compute in an experiment, for instance, when you, go, you, you are a biophysicist, and then you measure uh, something in the stationary regime, uh, you assume that the entropy here is constant. And actually, what you are always measuring or calculating is the entropy in the baths. So, uh, and, and this, is, this is true entropy, let's say. This is the kind of, this is, this is Shannon entropy, this is okay, but this is, I wouldn't say that this is a physical entropy. I would say that this is a Shannon, this is a Shannon entropy that allows you to predict things about this, which is what you measure at the end. Well, you can measure this, but I, I mean, this is, this is what you measure using thermodynamics. This is Q divided by T, or free energy, or things like that. But this is a long discussion that uh, not everybody will answer the same. <laughs> Massimiliano will say, ah, oh, this is a, this channel entropy is, uh, is entropy and so on. But I don't think so. Okay. Is there a way to relate this with the idea of having a filament in phase space and coarse grain plus that increases the entropy? Well, this is, as I, uh, we were discussing, this is, at, it, ultimately, this comes from that. But why? Because uh, when, whenever you use the master equation, you are already assuming that, you're, that you look at the system and, and you don't have uh, access to the details of the bath. So uh, you are, uh, and, and this, you, you have a coarse graining in, in, the very, in, the, in the basic assumptions of the master equation, you already have a coarse graining, which corresponds to these filaments that you said. But this is like previous to the whole formalism. This, what I've done here is just to show you that we can talk about entropy production and things like that using Shannon entropy for the system. This is the main thing. Okay? More. Is there any entropy associated with external agent? Or something like that? No, the external agent by definition, of course, if I ha there is an external agent, um, if, if the external agent is switching some uh, field or, well, it doesn't need to be a, a human being. It could be a, a, a computer or something like that. It has a lot of entry production. But the idea is that the interaction between the system and the external agent does not, is not accompanying, I mean, does not imply any entropy 
increase in the, system, in the environment. So by definition, let's say this is my definition of heat, is that uh, the external agent is, 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 a, is, a, is a way of exchanging energy, which is work, without necessarily uh, increasing the entropy of, of the environment. And, and this is how we model this, like a, a parameter in the Hamiltonian, changing a parameter in the Hamiltonian. Take into account that um, thermodynamics is a, is a very, is a highly, it's a very practical branch of physics, but it's, it's full of idealizations. When you study thermodynamics in detail, in, in, in foundations of statistical mechanics and, and thermodynamics, you realize that it's full of, of uh, idealizations. And this is one of those. OK, so uh, now I want to, Sorry. yeah. Uh, the entropy is? This one, minus q. Ah, OK. Uh, uh, okay, uh, this is Clausius equation. I said yesterday that the Clausius equation is one of the most strange equations in physics because it, it has been a definition of a, um, uh, this, this equation uh, you have different ways of uh, proving this. Well, the best way of proving this is to uh, consider that this is um, that the bath is in a canonical state. So uh, for the canonical state, uh, because by definition, we are talking about idealizations, but by definition, a thermal bath is something, it's a system that it's in the, in the, in the canonical state. And then uh, you can compute the entropy of the canonical state, the Shannon entropy or, or the, uh, yeah, let's say the Shannon entropy. And then uh, you can prove this. That if you have an increment of energy, this is this is delta of energy in the environment in the bath, and you can uh, prove this using the canonical ensemble. Uh, depending on how do you consider more fundamental, if you remember statistical mechanics in the undergraduate, actually this equation is is the definition of temperature. When you when you uh, when you say that uh, one over t is this uh, thing for equilibrium systems. Uh, this is this. This is just that uh, this is delta S and, and delta is Q. You have delta S equal Q divided by T. So um, if you consider that the entropy is the basic quantity in a statistical mechanics is like that, um, then uh, then this Clausius equation is the definition of temperature. Actually, temperature, the modern definition of temperature is this one. We don't define, temp I, I, we don't define entropy in a statistical mechanics as, as a function of, in terms of the temperature because the entropy is more basic than the temperature. So we define temperature like that. Yeah, the idea of non-equilibrium thermodynamics, non-equilibrium statistical mechanics, you, you always need that the environment is in equilibrium. Non-equilibrium environments is a mess. I doubt that you can even do thermodynamics with non-equilibrium environments, although there are people, I have papers with non-equilibrium environments, but, but uh, I, I, I doubt that you can, if you look at all the growth mass, all the classical books on non-equilibrium thermodynamics, you realize that any entropy production is calculated using this or using the same for the number of particles or things like that. So you, you know that when, when a system is in equilibrium, uh, you can al always use this equation uh, plus PdV. I think it's PtdV minus mu T dN. When a system is in equilibrium, you can always use this equation. And, and, and this equation contains things that are 
measurable if you like. This is in thermodynamics. So in thermodynamics, you can use this equation. And in non-equilibrium thermodynamics, ultimately, you are always assuming that something is in equilibrium, either local equilibrium or bats in equilibrium and things like that. Otherwise, it's not, it doesn't, you can still say that Sharon entropy is an entropy, but, but, they, but then you have to be very careful. And, and uh, at the end, also at the end of the day, entropy is just a tool. The, the important thing is energy. I mean, this is also uh, because some people is focused on entropy and entropy. Entropy is a tool. What you want to finally to prove is that, for instance, that you, you, the work is bigger than delta F and things like that. So um, uh, entropy is a tool. And then, um, and then uh, yeah, uh, the important thing is this, this uh, changes here. OK. I forgot there. OK, this is very <laughs> foundations of thermodynamics, which are really, I don't even have a clear idea. So maybe Edgar and Matteo have different uh, opinions of, of that. No, no, no. This is the first half. The first example that I show you in the class is to show that you can, if you have detailed balance, global detailed balance, you have current, zero current. But if you have driving, I, we, we have studied three possibilities of departing from equilibrium, keeping detailed balance, local detailed balance true. One is the first thing that I did, two temperatures. If you have two temperatures, you can have current, even though you have detailed balance. So. Detail balance, the, the expression is very unfortunate because it, in, in, in mathematics, detail balance means zero current. In physics, detail balance means this condition, which only induces zero current if the betas are the same, if there is, if there is no driving, if there is no any source of non-equilibrium in the system. So, uh, and we call this local detail balance, although maybe it's not very good expression, okay? But look at the first example that I solved here. Yeah, 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 but you have detail balance. Okay. So this is the nice thing. Detail balance is a tool that can allow you to extend its derived in equilibrium, well, in the derivation that I made because there are other derivations. And um, it's like a condition that any rate has to obey but you can, uh, you can, you only need to obey this condition locally, and then uh, if you globally, uh, your detail balance condition has different temperatures or driving, or as we are going to see, some um, uh, uh, chemical uh, potential, chemostats, then you can have an equilibrium. Okay, so. Um, uh, I wanted to extend this to chemical motors. Uh, but because you have the session to, to this afternoon, no, Leah, you have the session this afternoon. So uh, I'm going. I, I I'm going to do something that I hate, which is jumping <laughs> from. So we still have. Remember that there are uh, sources of non-equilibrium. But I think it's great that you have so many questions that we, we, are, we are slow, but I, I think it's much better to learn the things uh, in detail than having a lot of information. So uh, um, uh, I, I, uh, today I explained different, different non-equilibrium thermostats. Well, I explain. I just I just uh, show you an example. You can cook examples. Uh, driving, which is this thing. We have proved. Well, in this case, we have proved the first law, the second law, and so on. Um, and there are a non-equilibrium chemostats. And this is going to be on Monday. Ah, no, I, 
um, uh, Leah, you, you mind if you uh, lecture on Tuesday? Okay, so this is in one day. Ah. Okay. Or maybe no, maybe this is, a, this is on Tuesday. Because then we can connect it with other stuff. Uh, and now, uh, so this is lesson three, no? And now, let me, in the last five minutes, uh, 15 minutes, let's go to lesson four, which is information and the second law. And I, I will be very brief because, okay, we have spent a lot of time talking about thermodynamics and so on. And um, we have derived a very, very powerful tool. And the, the powerful tool is the, the second law uh, for non-equilibrium states. We said that... It, when, when information is involved in a process, essentially what we have is some non-equilibrium states. So we have this uh, uh, nice expression. That if I want to drive a system uh, from a non-equilibrium state, initial one to a final one, this means that I have a, 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 row, a Hamiltonian and a row. Remember that the, the, the non-equilibrium free energy depends on the Hamiltonian. So it's just the average of the Hamiltonian over rho minus t and the Shannon entropy of the rho. So I have uh, some initial states, some Hamiltonian, and I drive my system, or I measure, or I do different things, and, and I get the final one. So now I, I, I can apply this um, uh, inequality. to different processes. The first one, the easiest one, is feedback. So let's do a feedback and measurement. Uh, so I have a system with an initial condition. I will assume that the uh, system is in contact with a thermal bath, like like in the case, this is the, the Szilard engine, essentially. So I have a bath, and I have an external agent. The paradigmatic example of this uh, is, is the, uh, the Szilard engine. So I run my system, and at some time, uh, TM, I, measures, I measure some quantity M. And then I run a protocol until a given time tall. This is the duration of the cycle. Tall goes to infinity because it is a quasi-static process. I'm going to, cons well, no. This is, this is general for any process. Not, 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 it doesn't need to be quasi-static. Uh, so, uh, and in principle, I can apply, uh, I cannot apply the second, this law to, uh, well, I could, I could apply to everything, but here something, will, something happens. Here in the measurement, uh, I have, uh, uh, I have um, a probability distribution. For instance, in the case of the, of the Szilard engine, the particle can be everywhere. And uh, if I measure and I obtain a number, let, let me call this mess. Uh, 
and I obtain a, an outcome of a, my measurement. Then I have to update, I have a post uh, I have a, a, to update the, uh, the probability distribution using my, the information that I have. Remember that this is essentially the Bayes theorem. This is a, this is a, um, this is a, uh, well, this is condition to some measurement. And so, on. Uh, so now it's, we have to just apply what we have learned before. What is the entropy after the measurement of X? Is the entropy uh, before minus the mutual information between X and M. So that's it. Everything that we, have, uh, that we have learned in the first lesson or in the second lesson, sorry, on Tuesday, we can just apply it here. I'm, I'm confused with the notation. This, this M is the result of the measurement? Yeah, M is the outcome of the measurement. And we are in general going from zero to work. Huh? We are going from zero to work. I don't understand. This is the time of measurement, sorry. This is the time of so we measure and we perform some feedback. Okay. So now let's calculate the free energy, the non-equilibrium free energy. So the, there is a non-equilibrium free energy post and an equilibrium free energy uh, previous the measurement, and this is the uh, well, this is. This is the increment of free energy due to the fact that we have measured. And um, and uh, what is this? Well, we assume that the measurement doesn't change, does change rho, but we assume that it, was, it doesn't change the Hamiltonian, so the measurement does not cost any energy. We could include this, but for, for so the only difference is is in the in the entropy of the row. So this is a minus t. The entropy of row post minus the entropy of row, or if you if you want k t, and let's put h. This was the Shannon entropy, so it's k. Remember that usually we use s for for um, for the thermo for the entropy. It's the same quantity, s and h, eh? s and h. But usually, I, I comment on the first day that I have some doubts of what notation to use. Mathematicians use h for the Shannon entropy, and in physics we use s. It's the same quantity, but S is expressed in terms, in units of the Boltzmann constant. So one way of is to say that S is equal to K times H, or I should have used S all the time, maybe at the beginning. Anyway, um, this is a KT, and this is a, a post minus pre is minus I, so I have KTI. So uh, the increase, there is, an in, there is an increase of free energy due to the measurement. Of course, this involves some heat, with some, some work because of the second law. But now, this is what Leah will address on Monday. But now we are trying to address the first task, task of, of, of thermodynamics of information, 
which is we don't care about the cost of measurement for the moment. Leah will address this. We only want to incorporate the information into the second law. So uh, what we have is that a measurement decreases the entropy. This is something that we know. For instance, in the Zillard engine, the particle can occupy all the box. And when you measure, you have a compression for free, let's say. Now you go from the whole uh, box to just uh, uh, half of the box. So um, any measurement decreases the entropy. And because free energy is minus entropy, increases the so, entropy or the free energy of a system. Uh, so any measurement is expected to decrease the entropy, but it can also uh, decrease the entropy. So I, I mean, the, the, uh, ah, the, if the so free energy. I mean, the, 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 this mutual information uh, is, is, uh, is how much I expect to learn uh, before the measurement. But after the measurement, uh, the state M can be... In a single case. Yeah, this is, yeah. In, aver this is in average. Yeah. Of course, if you have... Uh, uh, okay, we have to discuss here the difference between talking about... Um, so uh, uh, the, the post the, the post measurement uh, depends on, on, on what you have obtained. This is a uh, 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 rho uh, mx, uh, rho x divided by uh, rho m. No, uh, so it depends on m, on the value. So for instance, if I have my Cilar engine with uh, with uh, and the, I put the wall here instead of in the middle, I can measure left and right. If I measure right, I decrease the decrease of entropy is larger than if I measure right. But now I'm talking about uh, averages. So uh, you have a, a you have a entropy of this thing. Which depends on M. If I if I average this over all possible m's, then I get hxm. And this is what I have. So this it is, is, a, it is why, always. This uh, is also why you are neglecting uh, the change in energy. The change in energy, yeah. Because you can you can include the change in in energy, but uh, it is it is easier in the sense that if you average the change in energy over the possible measurement, uh, then you. You get exactly. Yeah. The, yeah. So it's a, it's a post. Yeah, 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 because the row of the marginal doesn't change. This is one thing. The marginal, this is one of the assumptions of a measurement in classical mechanics, that in classical uh, physics, that uh, the, 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 if, if you make the marginal, which is this one, Uh, this, by definition, is equal to rho x. Pre. So the measurement doesn't change the marginal. The measurement only allows you to classify the possible results and so on. OK, so um, you have this, that the measurement decreases the entropy and increases the free energy. So I start with some free energy here. I do my work in the first part of the, uh, of the process, and I reach a, a new state, which is the pre. Then the measurement uh, transform this, uh, increases the, the free energy. And I complete my process like that. And here I have another work. And if I neglect, if I neglect the work in the measurement, which is, as I said, something that uh, 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 Leah will discuss on Monday, then what I get, what is the total work? The total work is work one plus work two. This is bigger. I can apply the second law to each part. So this is bigger than.
the increment of free energy in the first part and W2 is bigger than the increment in the second part, and now I have here pre minus post, I have a minus KTI, so I get that W is bigger than delta F, delta F is post, sorry, this is plus, no? Uh, ah, no, uh, delta F is final minus initial, and then I have pre minus post, which is minus KT I. And this is the second law for feedback processes. This is the second law for feedback processes. The work that I have to do is reduced by the information gathered in the measurement. It's minus because uh, this, remember, this is the work that I have to do. The extracted work is the negative. If I have a cycle, this is zero. And I can extract energy from a single thermal bath. How much energy? KTI. In the case of the Cillar engine, this bound is saturated because I, remember, is, the, is in the, in the error-free measurement. I is the entropy of the answer, which is one bit. I get one bit, but I, I have to express this in nuts, so I get KT log 2. So uh, in, the, in the Cillar engine, I get KT log 2. This, after, no, to, this afternoon, in the exercise, you will do the same with the error free, with the error measurement. So in the error measurement, you have to calculate the, the you, most of you did the exercise of the pro optimal protocol and so on. And you calculated the word you get when you have error. Now, you will see that this is exactly the mutual information. And you will also uh, uh, discuss the reversibility of the process in the, of the optimal protocol, and this is, uh, uh, yeah, we'll discuss this. So this was a bit fast, yeah. but I wanted to, to show before tonight, to this yeah. afternoon. So again, uh, I think this is the expected work. This is so everything that, I mean, is if average. If you take, take an average over many, many yeah. measurements, then this inequality all these things of second law and things like that are uh, in Irish. You can, somebody said on Monday or Tuesday, you can eventually, you can, I mean, in, in, in for a while, or if you are lucky to beat the second law, the second law is recovered only in average, which is something that also is interesting by itself. It's a problem. <laughs> okay. So see you on Monday because I, I'm uh, leaving for the weekend. So on uh, tonight, uh, to, to this afternoon you have an exercise session with uh, Leah. On Monday uh, she will lecture on the on, on lesson five, and Tuesday and Wednesday we we study with information flows with, with chemical motors and so on. This is a uh, this is Isaac's, but you have I don't know if you have signed this. I think it was, uh, ah, it's taki, mira. Oh. Everybody is tired? So when yeah. are you leaving? <laughs> now, uh, after lunch. Ah, okay. So we can have lunch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to take the...